In the mid-19th century, fear and a need to know what happens after death create a new movement in America, spiritualism. Before the American Civil War, spiritualism was really frowned upon. The Civil War came along and society was changing because of death, and for the first time, prominent people were going to these spiritualists to try and contact their dead. It was really ripe territory for something that would turn into quite a phenomenon. 1862, the White House. Mary Todd Lincoln, mother to the nation, is crippled by grief. Her 11-year-old son, William, has died from a fever. The only way to reach him now is through a medium. Mary Todd Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's wife, was a huge believer in spiritualism and actually conducted seances in the Red Room in the White House. Merciful spirits, we seek Mary's son, William. Give us a sign. The medium calls out the letters of the alphabet. E. The spirit spills out its message through a series of knocks. Imagine doing that paragraph after paragraph. He's here with you. All of this took a lot of time, and you had to have money to pay these mediums to ask these questions and make contact with the other side. But their monopoly could soon be over. In the 1880s, a new game grips the country, talking boards. Nobody knows where they come from, but spread by word of mouth and made by hand, they claim to let anyone speak to the dead. No medium, no cost. It had letters, yes and no. It had good night or goodbye. And it had a movable table that you'd place your fingers on, and it would spell out the letter one by one. It's this game, played in bars up and down the country, that will change the fortunes of one man. Charles Kennard, a fertilizer salesman from Baltimore. Kennard was an incredible businessman, always trying to find the next thing that would make money. And Kennard thinks the talking board could be his next hit. The thrill of speaking to the dead, repackaged as a game. Charles Kennard believes this is something that could be a bit of a parlor game, something everyone, the whole family, would get involved with. Kennard knows nothing about the occult, so he joins forces with a local attorney called Elijah Bond and his 28-year-old sister, a medium, called Helen Peters. Helen Peters is a bit of a mystery. For years, I had researched the fathers of the Ouija board, and it turned out it had a mother. We don't know much about other than she was a strong medium, and she helps name the Ouija board. Peters's ghostly experiences help transform the handmade talking boards into something they can mass market. And to save money, the first editions are made from recycled wood taken from coffins. <laughs> 